Amen. As we continue this morning, we will continue with what part is this? Part 11? Part 11 of this series called Relationship with God. Now, here in Victor Outreach North Hollywood, we have been very intentional with this series, amen, on relationship with God. Because the goal is that we would help to build the body, that we would help to build uh, mature Christians, right? Because when you have a relationship with God, you have a foundation. You have, you, have, you have a strong foundation, amen, to where you're not shaken, right? You're not, you're not, we want to build Christians that are not here today, gone tomorrow, amen, but that have roots and they have relationship so that no matter what happens, you continue to serve God, amen? amen. Building mature Christians that know God is the purpose of this series and relationships. Relationship with God is just like any relationship. It takes effort and hard work. Anyone ever been in a relationship or is in a relationship right now? Do you not agree that it takes work? <laughs> Those of you that don't put in no work, you will pay the consequences. Amen. My wife always tells me, what? You're crazy. You haven't made any deposits. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do that. She says, uh-uh, uh-uh. You haven't helped me with the kids. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. Those are called deposits. All the little things, you make lots of deposits so that when the time comes, you can make withdrawals. Amen? Amen. Relationships take effort and hard work. And we began in the first segment of this series is in his word. To know God, to learn who God is, you have to learn his word, his word and his truth. Because when you know the truth, you will not fall for a lie. Amen? Amen. The more you know his word, the more you know him. You know what he says about you. You won't believe what other people say, the world says, or what the devil says. You believe what he says about you. What he says about your circumstances. His thoughts Towards you are in his word. His word is vital to a Christian. The more you know his word, the more you will begin to know him. That's why it's important, foundations of relationship with God, to be in his word. Now look, I'm not saying you got to start quoting the, the Old Testament, but you got to start somewhere. As a believer, relationship with God, start with your Psalms and Proverbs. We shared that at the beginning. There's 30 Proverbs. It's not by coincidence. God is intentional. There's 30 days of the month. Read one a day. Read one a day and start there because that's the easy way that God speaks to you. Simple, to the point, and clear. God will speak to you through the Proverbs. Amen. Then we began to speak about prayer and how it's our communication with God and so much more. We learned that prayer... It's contrary to our human nature. We don't want to do it. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, that was weak because I know you guys aren't waking up every day, walking on water, praying in the spirit. You know why? Because naturally you don't want to pray. Anybody ever been there? He says, I ain't praying today, man. I'll pray. Amen. I'm going to stop. But the more we go in our prayer life, the more we know him. We learned of the different realms of prayer. How in the Old Testament it went from the outer to the inner and to the holiest of holies, right? In the outer court, Israel used to come and they used to bathe themselves in the laven. And they used to live their, live their altar. And it was a picture that if you only come to this outer point and you don't go any deeper, you come to wash yourself, you offer, you offer your offering, right? Then you wash yourself. But you, because you don't go any further, that's about as deep as your relationship is with God. You just come to wash yourself to go get dirty again. You come to just wash yourself and go get dirty again. You come to wash yourself and go get dirty again, but you don't go any deeper with God. But then you go into the inner court. And the inner court, it had the candles, the seven candles, the light. It had the leaven bread. It had the incense that was burning. All significant. The incense was constantly burning. A sweet aroma that our lives would be a sweet smelling aroma unto God. You had the bread, which was God's provision. And you start to learn as you go deeper with God, you learn that God provides every single one of your needs. The light represents God. He's the God of creation. God leads our lives. He's our guiding light. We are the light of the world. And then you come to the holiest of holies. 
And in that place, because even in the place of the inner court, even if you know that God is your provider, even if you know that our lives are to be a sweet smelling aroma, and you've come to that place with God, you go a little bit deeper, we can still wrestle with God. We can still wrestle with God. We can still wrestle with God. But when you come into the holiest of holies, when you come behind the veil, that's where God can do. That's, you come to a place where you can't even speak. You can't even, that's where you just totally open. Your heart is open and you let God be God. This is where change happens. This is where we completely just, we have shifts in our walk with God where everything is different from that moment on. Because this is where callings are released. This is where burdens are placed and we feel burdens to do things in life that God has called us to do. It won't happen in the outer court. It won't even happen on the inner court. It happens behind the veil as you go deeper with God. We learn that prayer is powerful. That we work with God to shape our destiny. Certain things will happen if we pray rightly. We're created in the image of God. God spoke things into existence. We're created in his image. God has given that to speak those things that are not as though they were. And I'm not talking about the name it, claim it. I'm not talking about, God, you're going to make me, you're going to give me a rose word. God, you're going to do this. No, no, no. But if we pray rightly and we speak it, because the closer we get to God, the more our, des our desires change. What we desire begins to change. Right? And then as you, when you pray according to where God is leading you, Ooh, you start to see things happen. Yes. You start yes. to see those things be as though they were. You start to see them begin to manifest themselves in the natural, what you have been speaking. Yes. And then most recently, we moved on to worship, and we went over the biblical definition of worship, where we learned that worship is more than a song. It's not just the lifting of our voices. But the Bible says in Romans 12, in the view of God's mercy, to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, meaning our true worship is the way we live our lives, that our lives would be pleasing to the Lord. That we learn that the Bible says that God, to worship God in spirit and in truth, and that God is looking for these type of worshipers in spirit and in truth, meaning rooted in his word and rooted in his presence. Then we spoke on the expression of worship, what we can do for him, the praise, the song, the dance, and how powerful that is. Remember we talked about, you know how powerful worship is, how powerful music is? Remember, Satan was a worship leader powerful gave him what he did gave him so much influence remember we talked about how music will mess you up right you think of a certain song and all of a sudden your ex pops in your head and you say get behind me satan right look how powerful music is right the right song comes out and you'll be like mm. you say oh no i gotta stop memories will come up friends will come up right Papas and beer will come up. <laughs> whatever it is that takes you wherever it takes you. Tupac comes up. Whatever it is, it will come up. Music will take you there. Powerful how music has influenced the whole generation. I was there in the 90s with gangster rap. It messed us up. I'm not going to lie. It's the truth. Music's heavy. But the song and the dance and the praise unto God, how powerful it is. It's our expression. It's what we can do for him. It's not about us, but when we worship God, when we lift up the praises, when we lift up the songs in our hands and our hearts, it's what we do for him because of what he did for us. Yeah. That's what the, the expression of worship is. And we start to realize how good God has been to us. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Man, that when we worship God, how the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So that when we lift up the praises and we lift up his name and we worship and we begin to play the instruments and lift our voices. And maybe your voice is not that great. Maybe your voice is not that great. Maybe you're off key, right? 
But it's okay. If it comes from here, it's beautiful to him. If it comes from here, it's beautiful to him. Now, if I'm standing next to you, I might go, ugh. But who cares what I think? God, it could be a sweet smelling aroma to God, and, and God comes down, and, and God's presence comes down, and your hands are lifted, and you're broken because you feel God's presence. It don't matter what I think. Because when God's presence comes, because he inhabits the praises of his people, right? When God's presence comes, guess what's got to leave? Guess what's got to leave? The lies depression, anxiety, confusion. It's got to shake the spot. It's got to kick rocks because the presence of God will come down as we worship. We talked about that. But now this is where we're going to get to, where we're going to get to. And I'm going to be quick. I'm on a timer now because remember, okay, I got a, I got a big announcement for you guys. November 13th, we're going to go to double services because we don't really fit here no more. So we'll have a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. And we'll talk more about it. I got to start promoting that. 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Okay, so you guys have a choice. Those of you that like to get up early, that you're early anyways. Some of you get up so early, not even God's awake that early. <laughs> but that's on you. Sundays, but you want to get up early, that's cool. But you can come at 9. Service will be done at 1030. And you can, or, or you could sleep in. And you can get here at 11. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we'll be starting double services. So here we go now. All, and all we've been intentional to build our relationship with God because our church is only five years old. And I've come to realize our church, we have to grow as a church. right? Meaning the way we grow as a church is we grow as people. We grow as Christians. And I had to make sure that you guys know your word. And you guys know what it is to pray. I don't want you guys to come and have a good time and feel good. And then you leave here and you've been coming here six months a year. And no one has taught you how to pray. And no one has even, you open up a Bible and you don't know where anything's at. But fear not. You've come to the right place. <laughs> I only got a few claps, but that's okay. Now this is heavy. You guys ready for this one? We'll, and we'll, we'll be parked here for the next three weeks. We are going to speak on relationships. No, not that type of relationship. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Tell it on yourself again. <laughs> here we go. Follow me. Follow me. I'm going somewhere this morning. Relationship with God. Okay, leads to service. Now, follow me. I'm not going to leave on service, right? But relationship with God leads to service, okay? As you grow in your relationship with God, as you truly grow in your relationship with God, and you get to know him and what he's done and who he is, you are compelled. You cannot fight it to begin to serve him, okay? This is heavy. Jesus sets an example of what service is in John 3, 15. It talks about the washing of the disciples' feet. Now, this is heavy. This is heavy. This is the Last Supper, okay? The next day, he's leaving. He's going to get up on that cross and do what God brought him here to do. And on this last day, look at the lesson that he teaches he doesn't say, hey, I'm going to teach you this powerful lesson on his word or prayer. He gives them this lesson, this illustrated sermon on servanthood. And then he even says, watch, it says that, it says, I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Because when, when he began to wash their feet, the disciples were like, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing that. You're God. And he's like, you big dummy, this is, a, this is bigger than that. I want you to see that I'm sitting in, that if I can do this, that if I can serve you, you can serve one another. If I can serve you, if I can humble myself to serve you, this is the lesson that I want to teach you before I leave. How impactful is that lesson 
that he chooses to teach it as one of the last things he leaves them with, to serve one another in humility. Look, do to, for one another what I'm doing for you. That's heavy, okay? But this part is it's not about service, but service is what we're called to do as we grow in our relationship with God. But this is where I'm going to park. The relationships that we will have in, in our service to the Lord. And there's three, okay? And the relationships that we will have in our service to the Lord. Three kinds, okay? There's your leaders. There's your peers. And, that, and there's those that you will lead. And I really want you to get this in your spirit. Three relations, relationships in our service to the Lord. Your leaders. Say your leaders. Peers. Your peers. peers. And those you will lead. Heavy. Leaders. And this is just an introduction. I'll break these down in the next three weeks. Leaders are those that God places in our lives to help guide us in our journey. People that have been there before. People that are further along than I am. Right? It's heavy because any time... Throughout the Bible and throughout history, anytime God wants to take you to another level, he will bring a man or a woman of God into your life. Every time God wants to promote you or take you to the next level, he's going to bring someone to help you get there. You just got to have the spiritual eyes to see it. You got to have the spiritual eyes to see it. Because no one is all that. Everyone needs to be guided. Even Paul the Apostle, who sat under the best teachers, the Bible says, who rose in the ranks of what he was doing before his conversion, before the Bible says he was knocked out of, off of his high horse, and after he was blinded, God had to send somebody to guide him. Because it is Paul that said, he says, when I was a child, I thought as a child, right? I reasoned, I thought, I talked, but when I became a man, I put away all childish things. Even he understood in his Christianity, even if anyone knew the Bible from front to back, it was him. He could probably recite it. He sat under the best teachers at that time, right? Even he said, okay, wait a minute, when it comes to this Christianity thing, this Jesus thing, I need somebody to help me. I need someone to guide me. And God uses that so that we can see it don't matter how much you know, when you come to Christ, we all start off as spiritual babies. And God brings people into our lives to help us grow. And people say, ah, well, that's just man. But God uses man throughout the Bible. Anything that God has ever wanted to do, he, he could, God could have delivered, God could have delivered Egypt on his own. But what did he do? He sent Moses. It's heavy. Look what it says in Psalm 77, 20. You lead your people like a flock. You, meaning God. You lead your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God used man to lead his people. He did it with King David. He's done it over and over throughout time, even throughout all the New Testament. Some people, if you want to say, eh, the Old Testament's old. Okay, let's look at the New Testament. It's woven all throughout the New Testament. Ephesians, Colossians, 1 Peter, Hebrews, talking about obey, follow. God will place leaders in your life because we're human beings and we're so smart and we can do so much. But in the things of God, God will place people in our lives. That's the first relationship. And I'll break that down through scripture as in, the, in the weeks to come. But also... God gives us relationship with our peers, okay? This is heavy. And he also gives us relationships with those that we are called to lead. And you might say this morning, well, I'm not, I'm not a leader. Well, you lead yourself. That's where it starts first. You lead yourself. You lead yourself to get up and grind. Can I get an amen? amen. You lead yourself. To start to pray, to read, to come to church. Nobody's going to force you unless you're a little kid and your mom puts you in the car. But eventually you get to an age where you got to make the decisions for yourself. You lead yourself. It's heavy. And it doesn't matter how great or how small. Right? Well, my Bible studies three people. Or I don't, need, I don't really look. In Exodus, the Bible says in 18, 25, he chose capable men or women from all Israel 
and made them leaders of people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Tens being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Meaning, there's an office, there's an anointing, there's a position. God ordained whether you're over two people or whether you're old 20, over 20,000 people. There's an anointing to that office, right? So you will lead, after you lead yourself, you'll see as we're called to service and growing the things of God, God will bring people your way for you to help. Amen. Remember, we're not only called to evangelize, but to disciple. It's twofold. Evangelize and disciple the nations. It's heavy. Can't, you can't evangelize and disciple the world when you can't even evangelize and disciple the people in your community or the people in your household. It's okay. Start with one. Make a difference in one person's life. And start really taking evaluation. Is this, is this person better because of me? Because God brought them my way. God brought them into my life. And God's in the center. Are they better because of me? I mean, and it can start to the simple. It doesn't have to be so extravagant for the world to see. It could be something so simple like when they first come to the house of God. Hey, this is the part where we worship. Trust me, it'll get better. That's helping somebody that doesn't even know any better, that just gets here for the first time. That's helping them. Put away your phone. You're helping them. Amen. Let, trust me, answer it when we're done. The world's not going to end. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Here's a Bible. Here, give me your phone. Bible app is not on your phone. You're going to get a scripture every day. Read it and tell me what you thought about it. That's so simple. But if you really look, are we doing it? Sometimes it starts with just me and me and your, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your little brother, your little sister, your cousin, your aunt, your neighbor, anyone. Right? And as you're faithful over little, God will put you over much. Right? And then all of a sudden you go from 10 to 20 to 30. Whatever the calling that God has upon your life according to what he has for you. But you have those relationships. And this is why. Relationships are huge. Relationships are important because we work in relationship with God and one another. We work in relationship with God and one another. Okay? Serving, Christ, in serving God in Christianity, we are to be relational. There's no lone rangers in Christ. Because what happens is when you're a lone ranger, you get weird. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Nobody's perfect here. No one is perfect here. I can ask your family or your spouse, and they will agree with me. No one is perfect. So if we're not perfect, right, we're flawed since the fall of man, since the Garden of Eden. We know that we're not perfect, that we're actually born with sin, right? So because we know this, do we have anyone in our lives to say, you're tripping, dude. You're tripping. Because if we're not careful, because we're human beings, Good morning. What's so good about it? Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, especially in our community, so much bad has happened that we're kind of almost naturally negative. But man, once God saved us, now I have to, I have to look, if I tell you good morning, and you might not say it with your words, but you don't have to. You say it with your body language and the facial expressions. Your face looks like you just, you, you got a lemon and you're like. That's how your face looks when you come to church. Well, that's the face that your kids see when they wake up in the morning. For real. Man, it's, come on, bro. Come on, sister, brother. God is good. God is good. Don't make me slap you. <laughs> but also, I got to look in the mirror sometimes and slap myself. Yeah. And says, man, I better stop it. I better stop being negative and stop complaining because God has been good to me. Yeah. You know what? If you, look at, if you really look at this room and where we come from and how we grew up, we, a lot of us should be statistics. 
We come from broken homes. We come from, some of us, we might have caused our own problems. But statistically, you shouldn't have made it. You shouldn't be in the position that you're in. But God has been good to us. God has been good to us. I've seen your throwback Thursdays. Some of you shouldn't even be here. Some of you were big old cholas. Come on now. Come on now, let's keep it real. Then look at you now. No more Sharpie on the eyebrow. Your kids are in church. You're covered up now. Come on now. <laughs> I shouldn't pick on the cholas. Because I married one. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Serving God is not boring. I love coming to church. Relationships are important, man, because that's how God designed us, right? So that we would work in relationship with God and one another because God is inherently relational. So as images of God, we are inherently relational. It's heavy. It's how God designed us. We're not called to do it all alone. And I'm going to get into that. Trust me, I'll get into that. But I'm just setting the, the foundation, the introduction of the, on the three types of relationships in our service to God. And then the next three weeks, we'll break it down. But God created, the Bible says in Genesis, male and female. He didn't just create male. In that same breath, in that same scripture, it said male and female. Right? That means it's not just you and God. It's you, God, and others. Come on now, let me say that again. It ain't just you and God for the God knows my heart congregation. I need somebody to tell me when I'm tripping. I used to make, I used to make a deal. When I first started out, I found the most tore up person because it was like a reflection of myself. And I said, come here, because we could understand this language. I said, hey, bro. If three weeks pass by and you don't see me, do me a favor, go knock on my door because I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. Make sure that I don't stop going to church. But now I've grown. Now, I don't care. I don't care if it's even here anymore. But as long as you go to church, as long as you serve God and go wherever you need to go, where you feel you can grow, man, the best to you. It's heavy. But don't let me disappear. Amen. Amen? Because God created male and female, not just man and God, but man, God, and others. We are in relationship with, we are in relationship with our creator and with others. We see God talking and working with Adam and naming the animals in Genesis 2. That means in your service to God, there's relationship with God. Whatever you do, you should have, this is a picture that you should have a relationship with God. Adam was just doing his job. He was doing what God called him to do. He was naming the animals, getting busy. But in that, he had a relationship with God. And we see even God visiting Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, how the Bible says he would visit them in the cool of the day. And it's just a picture that God is a relational God, okay? And God is, because we are created in his image, we are called to be relational. And the three relationships in our service to God, you have those that help you, you have those leaders, then you have those that are your peers, and then you have those that you lead. Now, this is heavy, okay? It's easy sometimes. First, everybody's different. Some people struggle on following instructions. Some people have been getting sent to the corner since kindergarten. Didn't listen to my mom, didn't listen to my dad, don't listen to anyone. This will be the hardest one. Following instructions is the hardest one. But then that's, when the Bible, that's why the Bible is beautiful. The Bible says if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. He who loses his life will find it. Okay? And then some, the peers is hard. Because I can follow instructions and I can give them out. 
but I just don't really have that many friends. It's heavy. But because we're relational and made in his image, we got to grow. This is where we got to grow. We're going to grow in this together, meaning you got to have friends. You got to have people that you're just not telling them what to do or being told what to do, but that you can have relationships in the things of God. Can I get an amen? Now, this one's hard. This is probably the hardest one for me because I can tell I'm a soldier. Tell me what to do. And I'll lead. Let's go. But in being friends, whoo, I had to grow, especially in Christianity. Because in Christianity, God will bring us all together. Don't matter if you never broke a plate or if you were the worst of the worst. We're called to have relationship with one another and to do this together. Because God didn't just call. It's not just between him and God. It's God, man, and others, right? So it's heavy because this was the part that was like, this is where, man, I have to love and humble and care what they think and really value who they are and what they bring to the table. I started to go through it. God had to rebuke me. But they're dumb, Pastor. And I had to learn really in his word. How many chances have I gave you? How many chances have I given you? And you just want to just cut people off that quick? I had to grow. Now, sometimes I might cut you off for a day or two, but I'll get over it. It's not personal. I get cut off all the time for, for just teaching his word. But my tactics are not the greatest, I'll be honest. But if I stick to his word, I'll be okay. I just got to stick to the word. And even if I stray, I got to get back. Even if I stray, I got to get back. I have to. Saves my life. But in with your peers, it's heavy. With your peers, it's heavy. Because it's like I, I, I follow instructions for my benefit. I lead for my benefit. But just to have relationships, sometimes what's the benefit? Unless you're being manipulative, manipulative and just trying to work people. And it's victory outreach, so... If you come, we'll see it a mile away. You might get me once or twice, but I'll start to see it. Some people say, man, your church is not friendly, man. I come over here and everybody's kind of standoffish with me. And no, it's because they see right through you. We come from the hood, bro. I see right through you. <laughs> we want to we wanna get to know you before, you know, it's heavy. But then we got to grow too. Because we, because we've been hurt so much, we're growing. We get defensive real quick. We get offended real quick, and we gotta, we gotta pray. And then get, after we pray, we, man, forgive me, Lord. And then when they say, "Hey, how you doing, brother?" Well, we grow. We grow. We grow. We grow. So in our relationships, this is where we're gonna go for the next three weeks, as the worship team could make their way up. The three relationships in service. Okay, it's letting our leaders, our peers, and then those that we lead. Right. It's heavy because some people can be great friends. I'm friends with everybody, but I don't need anybody. Yeah. I'm friends with everybody, but I'll never, like, I don't, because I want to stay friends with everybody, I'll never confront anyone. I'll never say, what are you, I just won't say nothing. I'll just hold it in because I don't want the confrontation. And instead, I should be telling you, don't text them back. What's wrong with you? That's what I should be saying as your friend. I should be saying, don't do that. Stay away from this. But in love. But in love, right? But some people struggle with that. I can follow and I can have a lot of friends, but I don't want to tell anybody what to do. We got to grow. Even if it's just you first. And then one person, however God has it. But in those three phases, we're going to go through it. And what the Bible says in the next three weeks. And we're going to break it down on what the Lord says through Scripture on how we are to carry ourselves in each one of these relationships, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as Christians. And you'll see, everything leads to building your relationship with God. Because following instructions, I don't want to do it sometimes. I don't understand it. I got to pray. I got to pray. The spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak, and I don't want to do it. Lord, if you can, take this cup away from me. I do not want to do this with that person. I don't want to do food sales with that person. 
I don't want to do kids gang with that person. I don't want them sitting next to me. <laughs> I need to pray and the Lord will do with me. Are you kidding? That's my daughter just as much as she's just as much as you are my daughter. How many chances have I given you? Don't make me pull your covers in front of this whole congregation. You want to point out her struggles when I've been hiding yours. Because I'm giving her time. I just want to grow. And I've learned that how I grow is through people. People will put you through changes. Can I get an amen? My peers, my peers, all the other pastors, ooh, we get on each other's nerves. My wife will tell you, I'm real confrontational. One of them says something, I said, why you got to say something? It's because. I said, oh, Lord, myself. Lord, forgive me. Can you just be a good friend and not try to take control of every situation, Mr. Leader? We can't even go somewhere and I try to just boom, 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 boom. And she's like, dude, just be normal. Have a good time. And I have to, like, I really have to work at that. Like, mm. I'm serious. I'm serious. I gotta like. And I realized this. I realized this. Is God. Okay, my wife, she's not really like a planner. She's more like a let's flow. Let's go this way. And in my mind, I'm thinking, we need this, we need that. I gotta plan this. And then sometimes it'll work beautifully. Way better than I could ever have planned it. And she goes, you see? And I'm just like, oh my God, Lord. You humble me so I don't think that I'm all bad. You humble me. You let her be right on purpose because of me. Serious, because come on now, man. We have a tendency to just kind of like, no, we're going to do this. And no, 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 no. Stop. Enjoy it. Learn how to have relationships and not have to take control of every, whatever the case may be. And to do that, I need Jesus. And I realized I've come to points in my life where I've been so mad and I gotta go pray. I gotta go pray. And then I had that revelation. See? You see? And I was like, okay, Lord. And then in the leading, I need Jesus. How to speak when I'm wrong. Right? Because look, I got news for you. I don't care who you are, but you're not always 100% right. Okay? So you're going to make mistakes, so be ready for them. And when, and when you do make them, just try to get better. But sometimes we spend two weeks not even acknowledging the mistake. Or longer. We could be in the wilderness for 10 years before we finally come back and say, man, I had it wrong. So I need God in the leading of myself first and then of others. And then as I get to, the more I grow in leading others, you see people have different personalities. Not everybody's like you. Some people require, mm, mm, because that's the only way they learn, the hard heads, the knuckleheads. The only way I learn is if you, it's gotta be on. Because you tell them nicely, 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 they don't move. But when you give it to them, they're just like, okay. God's like that with us too. And then there's some that are they're a little bit easier. You got to use different, but everybody's different, so you got to use different, you know. But you need God. You need God, because some people are not like you. Some people don't come from the background you come from, so I need God to be able to do what God called me to do, right? Relationships are huge. Relationships will help you in your relationship with God. As you grow in your relationships in all these three phases, to, in your leaders and how you follow and you'll see how it's all intertwined. The best leaders I've learned are the best followers. Heavy. And you learn in, these, in Christianity to be relational. Relational. Even if it's not natural. You'll feel God in it. That's when you feel God when you're doing what you don't want to do. That's when God steps in. When it gets hard. Don't you notice the harder, the harder, harder it gets? That's when God shows up the most. The most grace. The most mercy. When it's easy, you got to be careful because when it's too easy, you don't need God. You kind of start forgetting about him when it's too easy. So God allows us to go through some hard things because that's what we feel the most. And people, boy, I'm going to tell you right now, relationships will keep you sharp. Can I get an amen? Your husband and your spouse will keep you on your knees. 
Christ. I love the, I love the church. You guys are just as crazy as me. Amen. 11.32. I said, I'm going to start finishing by 11.30. I got to get, I even got to get even faster because double services. I got to finish like at 11.20, 11.15, do an altar call and have you guys all out of here by 11.30. I mean, 10.30 and have the next crowd come in. And some of you that are leaders, you're going to be held hostage. <laughs> From 8.30 to 2. <laughs> but I'm excited to grow in the things of God. I'm excited to continue growing in my relationship with people. Those that I'm under, I want to be a blessing. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, like the coolness of snow is a, is a, it's a faithful servant to his master. Like the coolest of snow on a hot summer day. That means like a cold map. One of my one of the pastors where I used to be says, you know what you are? You're like a you're like a cold glass of water on a hot summer day to my pastor. And I found that scriptures. That's the type of, of follower that I want to be to my leaders. I want them when they see me walk through the door, they're refreshed. That talks about refreshing, man. We're gonna be alright, man. They got it, man. They got the passion, they got the love. They got the burden. They're, they're a blessing. They're that cool. They're refreshing to us. I don't want to walk in and be like, here he comes. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. He's about to complain. Three, two, one, go. Hey, Pastor. It's all right. I'll work with you. I love you too. And then with my peers, I don't want to, I, honestly, because I'm a leader, I don't want to rub people the wrong way. I don't want to be a jerk. I want to be a good, not only I want to be a good follower and a good spiritual son and a good Christian, but I also want to be a good friend. You know, not so, not where everything's about me. You know, learn to settle in my spirit and care about what others are going through because if they're not following me and I'm not leading them, but we're friends. I want to be a good friend. I want to reflect Christ. You know? And then also I want to be a good leader. I really do, man. I want to pray for the people that I lead. I, want to, I really want God to lead me in what, what we do. Now, trust me, none of them is perfect. This is why it's so beautiful that as you work on these things, it'll get you closer to God because you need God in these areas. We need God in these areas, right? We need God. I need God in every relationship of my life. My spouse, my children. Oh, my God, as a parent, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I want God to lead me. Amen. So what we're going to do is, if anyone here you feel like, man, I, I don't know which area spoke to you, but if you feel I want to be better in this area or this area or that area, I really want my relationship with God to grow in one of these areas. We're going to open up these altars. This is what we do. We're Pentecostal. We're, we're believing in the, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We do altar calls. We believe that the presence of God shows up and we leave different. We're going to open up these altars, and if that's anyone here this morning, we're going to pray for you, amen? The altars are open. Empty me.